last time we discussed the, what, the annual checks, whether what you need to do an annual check or a month before a long passage like, a, like an ocean crossing or, or a major passage that you're planning to do. This episode we're going to discuss what you need to do before one week of this passage. So some of the stuff will sounds like it is a, a duplication of last, last month of the month before, the checks that you did the month before, but it is also, you have to keep in mind, sometimes we can maybe do the passage planning and we, for example, have done this long passage in January and now it's already in October and we're going to do a small passage from one small island to another island or one harbor to another harbor. This is the main difference between the two checks. One is a month before time, which is a big one, but it's also an annual one. And th this one that we're doing today is to say, um, what can we buy or provide or provision a week before the passage? So we need to check those things that might be broken and we can still get it within one week. Let's start. If you have a spare one like we do, then you also need to check that the spare one is working and that the connectivity is working on this one too. Also ensure that even the spare one, if it was lying a little bit long, also make sure that it is charged and charging and working and all of those things. Okay, let's check the, the radium and a predict wind connection. So we're going to do from here to there or whatever. We just want to see the quick one. So download. We want the wind and pressure. That's fine. And we want it for those two models. Let's continue. Here we go. Okay, it looks like it was working and you can see now the Maltemi will really definitely is blowing at this moment out there in the Greek islands but here where we are there's a lot of shadows so let us see what happens if we just quickly go like this da, 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 da. yeah it looks like along the coast it is not that bad but we might have something at Bodrum eventually but most of the times here at the coast, it's good. So let's look at the other one. And for most of the time, I can see here is the low pressure system. Here's the low pressure system. So that is where the wind wants to go. Okay, let's check the radium mail, whether that works. Send receive mail. Connecting, so let's see if it can connect. I think we might have a lot of emails. Download the latest pilot charts for the area that you're going to sail in. Pilot charts rank near the top as one of the most valuable assets of long distance cruiser or passage maker. Thanks to Brain from Catamaran MP, I've learned about SAS. You can use SAS to download various satellite images from Bing and Google and Nokia. I'll put a link to the website in the description below. 
So this is the the, the big over, overview of the of the area. It tells you a little bit of history of the area and so on, but if we want to know all the nice places, all the little nice restaurants and, and places to see, then we have these books. They are pretty big. So Turkey's Southwest Coast and Greek Islands, and we also have this one, the Bay Info. Okay, so we are currently there. Marmaris and our end goal is to get to Bodrum. 80 miles over here if we only want to do day it's too far so we can do 20 20 20 so we can see along Dutch there is a lot of places that we can go to and then all the way to Bodrum there's a lot of other places to go to so that's why we decided on Dutch and Later on we can then check all of the other little places. So also print log sheets that you can record all your stuff after the after each shift or during the shift, what happens, your speed, your direction, your heading and things like that. Check your harnesses and for, for any wear and tear and this might sound like we are duplicating what we've done a month ago but the reason why we do it this time is maybe you done uh, Atlantic crossing or some crossing or a very long voyage in January or you did your annual check in January and or for the season you started checking maybe in January and then in October you do another passage. So a week before that passage, then you need to check them again because on a lively voyage or passage, you might get, these things can get rusty or, you know, we already noticed that um, in the past time that this one was, was uh, rusted and oxidated. So on a lively passage, things can happen. So you have to check this again so you have to you have to make sure that um, anything any passage that you're planning if you think you need to start doing this again do it again and the more you do it the better you do it so if you can do this a week before every passage then it will be good or if you know that there was a very nasty rainy stormy passage then do it again so it's not just an annual check but it or a month before a passage check it is also a check that you do before every, um, a week before every passage. Make sure that all of it is now wear and tear. Um, then even in the little, in the bladder, check that the wear and tear is good. Check that the MLBs has not been triggered yet and it is fine and the whistle is working. Yeah, it's working. Yes, inflation, does it work? Mm. Yeah. It's working. I need to deflate it again. Also check your your tethers. With your tether. Check your tethers whether it's good, whether the clips are not rusty and that I can easily still work both sides. Yeah, it's working, so the tether is good. Also check your floating devices, whether there is wear and tear on it. And no spiders inside. Yeah, sounds good. Check your bobstay, uh, yeah, your jack stays, whether it's good. Uh. You see, this might be a problem if we come past here. And make sure there's no chafing. Ah, see, here's a problem. So this one must be below the jack stay. Okay. 
your running rigging. You must check your running rigging. Oh, and check whether the blocks are good. They are not cracked. And whether there's no chafing happening on on the lines. So make sure that your car can move freely. And remember to set it back to the place where you got it. Check whether your reef line blocks is good. Whether your cars are okay. We have very new lines, but don't think for one moment that if you order new lines that they will be perfect. Because our lines, when we actually put it in, the lengths were not right. And also we found that the sleeves, when they did the splicing, they're not the splicing correct. So our main alert need to be redone because the sleeve, our sleeve on the main alert is actually loose. Inspect all your pulleys, making sure that, that they are all running and that they rust free. So this is our auto. For us, we cannot change the auto, so the auto is pretty much fixed. Also check this. Making sure that the components are good, the shackles are still good, and no cracks on these ones. Ensure that all the lines will not somewhere get get into into a block. You have to check your water maker whether it's working or not. So let me, I just going, so I have it on my phone here, it's on a network. Let's see if it's working. Now check for any leakages. Any water that's running or coming out. So now water is coming out there. And also the water maker has some filters, so check the filters. And also no leakages here. Okay. Steam light on, off, yes, it's working. We need, to, we need to check the deck light. Switch the deck light on, off and on. It's working. I will do a proper engine check episode just for the engine check because it is an episode on its own. And in that episode, I will include um, not only uh, engine check just before you start the engine, but also include things like what you need to do every 250 hours and what you need to do every 500 hours. And then there's another thousand hour one again, which I have not done yet. So <laughs> um, I will not have any practical things to show you, but I can point out where you need to look at it. So a week before the time, you don't because you will do an engine check just the day before you go and you need to do actually an engine check every time when you start the engine so this one that's a week before the time is not necessarily to to do an engine engine check but to actually check what um, inventory you might need remember you have got one week left so you need now to go and find 
maybe oil so look at your oil inventory so I've got the oil inventory there so look at the the, the running things um, look at the, the, the consumables of the engine itself um, normally you you already have a month ago you check for the fan belt you check for um, the elbows you check for all the things that might take a long time to order this one this time now you check for things that you might need to order or go to the shop now and find it and then store it so make sure that you your consumable um, inventory for the engine is there I mean of course diesel is one of them but that that will be done later what you um, can do is let the engine run the engine should run maybe for an half an hour or so and then you come into the engine room and you check for for leaks so normally normally for for me I need to check there is a bulge and over there is another bulge a gray the gray area over there so I'm just checking that I'm checking for for general leaks um, that might occur and the general condition of the engine check all the raw water strainers um, and we have a couple of them we also have fresh water strainers or for debris that's coming in from the from the fresh water tank itself so for in case if you do fill up water and it is dirty then the strainers will but yeah so check all of these strainers if you can look inside make sure that there is no if you can look inside make sure that there is no debris or stuff uh, grass or things in there here is another one follow it and there is the seacock closed Yuck. Check your anti-siphon loops and many people think there is only one in the engine room which you also need to check right. this big one here so it's above the water line and there's nothing at this moment to make sure that it doesn't anti-siphon but it is very difficult for the water to actually come in but you also have anti-siphon loops like fresh water now most of the Leopard 45 anti-siphon mechanisms is just to have a loop above the water line and I know there's many other people at other um, boats that have actually a little valve a suction prevention valve so yes the the fresh water lines and that is the highest point and if you look there it is definitely higher than the water tanks but you will also see a kind of like a non-return valve but it also acts as an anti-siphon valve so it's a two-way valve it's over here another thing that we need to check is the shaft seal itself 
While you're in the water, it's a little bit difficult, but there is a trick that you can do. What we can do is the following. You let the engine run for a while, and then you check whether the oil is milky. And I don't see any milkiness here. Yes, yeah. The next thing that you need to check is your um, shaft coupling. Now we uh, uh, don't have a shaft coupling, but we do have sort of a shaft, a sail drive. And what I do here is I just check that there's no leakages or water coming out on the side. And you can just go all around and making sure that I don't see any water coming in. And a good way of checking it is actually there in the bulge. So if there's water in that little thing, then I need to start looking for water. And one of the suspects might be the, the, the sail drive um, seal or shaft, not really a shaft seal, but the sail drive seal itself. Below that one is the sea, so the water is actually right there. The water is actually right here, so this is the only thing that prevents the sea to come into the engine room. We prefer to do our laundry before a long trip, because especially stuff that's been sitting in the cupboard for a while, um, tends to smell a bit moldy, so now at least everything smells nice, fresh and clean. Okay, so this was my first provisioning since, well, big provisioning since leaving Cape Town. Um, I think I stocked up for six years, let alone six months, so um, our stuff is pretty fine, except for the day-to-day -day stuff the last couple of months, but now we've got quite a hectic passage ahead of us, so it's big stuff back again. So what I did is I went down and I uh, emptied out all my bins, packed everything out, took the stock out, and then I've got more or less a ballpark figure of how many of each I need. So um, then I just supplemented it. And as far as the actual trip to the shops was concerned, I think I found 90, 90% of the stuff that I was looking for. And another thing is they delivered to the boat just now. So it's still a bit chaotic. I've just re rationed the meat and everything so that's in the freezer and the, the bottom is still full of cans and stuff and yes snack bin stuff so I will systematically work my way through while we on passage start to freeze what you can freeze We are due to set sail within the next day or two. Um, it's going to be quite a long, long sail, so the big provisioning is starting again. But what I've done the last couple of days, I have done some pre-cooking. I've done some curry mince with potatoes in. I've done bean soup, our favorite. I've done bolognese sauce, so I've got lots and lots in the freezer. These are just a couple. And then what I do is I cook a relish uh, with tomato, onion, green pepper, red pepper, and garlic. So that's a basis for a stew, or even if I do sausage for breakfast, I use that as a gravy. So it's, it's a multi-purpose and it saves a lot of time. So yeah, now it's a little bit of stock take and then off to the shops. It's a good idea to check your fuel levels. Also a good idea to see that the engines is actually starting. And go check out whether the pump is working. Uh, 
Um, and you can check your diesel levels, but that's not what this is about. We are going to check whether there's some stuff in the diesel tank. If it needs to be, we've got one week left to get to replace the diesel basically. So we need either drain the diesel completely, fill it up again, and get done with it. I normally use a biodiesel treatment stuff that I put in once in a while with the diesel just before I fill it up. I put a cup of that inside the diesel inlet and then I know it mixes quite well. So before long passages I do that and also I think when people is doing overwintering things then I also do that. So if you know your diesel is going to stand a long way, first fill your diesel to the fullest so that the water condensation is not happening that much. So if your tank is full then you have well, it's reported that you have less of this biodiesel bug thingy. If you have a drain valve, you can use a drain valve and then with a little bucket and just unfasten the stop there and then you can drain it into, into a bucket and you can just inspect it there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do the full inspection. We have an inspection hole as well. So from ours, my side, I think I'm going to open it up here and actually check the tank whether there's some debris or stuff inside the tank. Feel the spray of the waves on my face Atlantic Indian Ocean Blue Whoa, land in sight to The moment. Oh, truth. That looks remarkably clean. If you need extra fuel, make sure that the extra fuel is full. Ensure that your dinghy fuel is full and that this little top here is closed so it doesn't leak. We also have a spare fuel can just for Tipex. So also make sure that your spare, because dinghy, dinghy petrol, dinghy, <laughs> Dinghy outboards normally use petrol, they don't use diesel. So for that, we have a different color for that. And this is our spare fuel for, for the dinghy, for Tipex. So we make sure that you have the spare fuel ready as well. Ensure that your LPG gas bottles is filled and full and ready to go. So we've checked now a lot of things a uh, week before the passage. And we are looking good to go. So only thing that's left over is, is actually two more checks and that will be one week, actually one day before the passage and we will talk about that next episode and then the other check after that will be just before you leave, immediately before you leave. So two more checks and then of course the engine check that I promised. <laughs> <laughs>